The Healing Consciousness Beloved one, you are standing now on the threshold of a time of great healing, for your world is calling out for transformation. The brothers and sisters are calling out for hope, for comfort, for something to believe in beyond the seeming random act and chaos which they see in their world. You, beloved one, can speak of hope. You have felt the joy within which the world does not understand. And you can say that even though appearances are most tragic, I know who holds me in the future. It is not so much a who as a what. The ongoingness of the Christ, the love of Christ, and the divine order of the outworking of the Christ love. Now in the day and time which you shared with me, that which is recorded in the Holy Scripture, a good percentage of my ministry dealt with healing, and much of my ministry had to do with teaching. In truth, all of my ministry had to do with teaching or healing, for you cannot separate the one from the other. As there would be teaching, and all will be received and understood to a place of catalyst for remembrance, there comes forth healing. How do I facilitate healing? First of all, we will start with the most obvious factor. There had been numerous examples of healing and miracles of healing, so that there was a certain reputation which had been built up, which gave credence to one's believing that I had special powers. So when they came into my present, there was already the belief that they could find a healing magic. There was also within my presence a knowing, for I knew that these ones were already perfect, already healed, and that they could manifest the healing. So there was a reputation that went before me, and there was also the magnetic energy field around me, because I knew that there was holy energy within me and within the others. I knew that all that was required for the healing to manifest was a certain connection, the same as you have in this day and time with your electricity. There is a possibility of electricity in the wire. There is a possibility of electricity in the outlet. You put them together and what happens? Great energy. But you have to put them together. It is the same with magnetic healing energy, which you are. There is magnetic healing energy around you. It is the life force. It is the Christ. It is the isness which activates the body. As you will desire to facilitate for others their remembrance of healing, you will do within yourself a certain amplification of truth, of healing energy. It is a vibration of knowing, an isness of knowing. First, you acknowledge that there is an appearance of a problem. Then you draw your awareness, your point of focus, away from the obvious appearance. Now this pertains to healing of the body and also of circumstance. You will draw your focus away from the appearance, and you will take yourself into the place of the beholder, and look through the eyes of the Father. Take a deep breath. Remove the specific point of focus. You can still be looking at whatever concerns you, but within your consciousness, raise up the consciousness to a place of expanded awareness of the energy of that one who is activating the body. Move your consciousness into the interdimensional self, the matrix of you, the holy self of you. In other words, you are going to forget your small self. Because if you stay in the consciousness of the small self, that small self is going to say, Well, I can't do this. Well, that little I is not going to do it. But allow yourself to move into the place of the beholder, the interdimensional self, to look through the eyes of the Father, if you will, to the energy, the Christ energy, and also to the physical energy of the one or circumstance which would be healed. Imagine the physical energy first of all. If you do not see the energy with the physical eyes, imagine it within on the inner plane of your consciousness. You will see the person not as a physical body, but as the energy of vibration. You will see it swirling around the body, and you may see it in certain patterns. This is how you read the chakras. This is what you have done in other lifetimes when you have facilitated healing. You have read the energy vortices of all the bodies, and you have seen where there may be a certain vortex which is slowed down to a place where it is not allowing the light of the vibration of energy to circulate freely. Then, from the place of beholder, you consciously direct the energy of the Christ Self through you to certain vortices to activate them. Still, from the place of beholder, because your part in this is to know their holiness. It is not to heal them. It is their choice whether they will plug into it or not. There were ones who came to me who did not plug into the remembrance and were not healed. Was I a failure? No. Were they a failure? No. It was just a no-not-yet decision, and you allow them the experience. So you offer them the Christ energy from the place of the beholder, and then you breathe and you smile. Whatever happens is okay. Then you walk on to the next one. 
I was always available either in person or always in spirit for ones who desired healing. There were ones who came to me and wanted to be healed in their awareness of self, individualized self. They wanted to be healed, and yet at another level there was meaning and purpose for the no-not-yet answer. But there came a later time when they called out to me, and I was not there in physical presence, but they called out to me and said, Aha, now I get it. And in that moment of the revelation there was healing. So it does not have to happen in a very time when you, perhaps, want to see results. It does not have to happen in your presence. Your job is only to be the willing servant, to come from the place of the interdimensional self, the Christ self, the beholder, and with sincere desire to bring of the Father all the love which the other one already is for the purpose of knowing holiness, for the purpose of healing. The principle of healing is true when you are dealing with the body and is also true for circumstance, relationships, and events. When you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, allow yourself, first of all, the deep breath. Go into the place of the interdimensional self, the Christ self. Allow your consciousness to rise up. You may still be aware of events which are taking place on the world plane, but you are also taking your consciousness into the uplifted state of the Christ consciousness. Then look at the most wonderful dance, for that is what it is, which is being done. Watch the energy of vibration in the dance. Watch how it swirls. Look through the eyes of the Father and know that all serves the atonement. Each and every one of you has come once again into this lifetime to be a healer. Many of you have chosen, either as a direct profession or as an avocation, to be a facilitator of healing. Those of you who have not felt called in a direct way to be a healer are healers because of what you are living. As you are living from the space of optimism, of hope, the place of believing in the good, the place of loving, the place of friendship, the place that says, Yes, you may fall down many times, but I will be here to lift you up. You are healers. You are a healer, and this is a time of healing. It is a time when all of the issues which comes from a place, a belief, unlike love, are going to come up to be looked at once again and to be transformed, to be seen in holiness and healed. The human ego is calling out for healing. The human ego has lived in separation for so long that it calls out now to be lifted up into the ego, capital E, the I am ego. The human ego is going to give you all kinds of questions, all the what ifs and buts, but in truth, the human ego is calling out now to be healed. This is a time of healing, and you are a healer. And I speak to you now as many of the beloved brothers spoke to you in what you would see as an earlier time, a time when you experienced being in the early groupings known as the early churches. You have recorded in your holy scriptures letters which are written to you, for you were there as the member of one of the early churches. You did not see yourselves as an organization, as a church. You met in homes. You met in fellowship. You met in love. And you wanted to know then, as you have been asking in this lifetime, what more is there to life? I would speak to you now of the healing of the soul. For indeed, all healing of the body is in effect a final result of the healing of the soul. The releasement of old burdens from limited beliefs carried in other lifetimes. The releasing and the healing of old wounds. I would ask you, first of all, are you in a place now where you could use some help with something that is going on in your life? If so, I have good news for you. There is help, and the help is all around you. Even as you look with physical eyes, the help is all around you. For as we spoke of how to facilitate healing of the body, now we will speak of facilitating healing of the soul. To be there, as it is in your common parlance for another one, to be there in spirit and in love to support a brother or sister, in what they are going through and to facilitate for them the releasement of old baggage and the claiming of healing in the soul. How do you do this? By true prayer together, the acknowledgement that you are not alone, the acknowledgement that I am always in the presence of pure love and all help is available unto me at any time. As you will ask, even before it shall be answered. In this day and time, there is a collective belief in separation, the collective belief said that we are separate bodies and that everyone goes his own way alone. There are many times when the separated ego will say to you that this is the truth of your being. It is not the truth of your being, capital T. It is the truth that you are living out small t, because you have agreed that will be the paradigm of this time. And when you find yourself abiding in a space of separateness and aloneness, the world and all of its questions can feel very heavy. 
when you acknowledge I am not alone. I am in the presence of pure love in this moment, for in truth you are always in the presence of pure love. I am in the presence of the love of the guides and teachers and masters and angels, the saints and all the loved ones that I have known any lifetime, past, present, future. Then you take on a knowing of the greater self and you walk with more confidence, for you have brought together more of the seemingly scattered energy of the holy child, and when two or more are gathered together in my name. In other words, when you call upon the seemingly separate and scattered parts of yourself, there is great power, great healing power, and great love. When you find yourself desiring some support, call upon a friend. Call upon them first through the mind and through the heart, and then if you still do not feel their presence, and you will get to the place where you will call them with your mind and your heart, and you will know that they are instantly with you. Then pick up your telephone and call and say, I'm facing a problem right now. I need some help. I need to know more of my holy self. Will you be with me? And your friend or guide or guardian angel will say, Of course, I am there for you. I have no other purpose in this lifetime, which is true, except to be with you in love. That is your purpose, and you will find in that moment of deep peace within and around you, and that which has seemed to be so sorrowful, so heavy, so conflicted, will no longer feel so heavy, so sorrowful, so conflicting, for you have the power of the Holy One joined together. Now I would suggest to you that as you describe to your friend or guide the challenges you are facing, you do not have to do a soap opera rendering of all the details. Instead, when you speak with a friend or guide, put forth that which you desire to experience. That is the first step in the healing of the situation, the willingness to walk beyond that which you have found yourself mired in. For if you do a certain soap opera rendition, you only keep yourself and the other one in that space for a longer time. If you have to give some background, keep it abbreviated. If you feel that you want the support of another one, do not put yourself down as being weak or being not quite good enough to do all by yourself. But look around and find the holy self of you incarnated as the brother and sister and ask for support. You do not have to walk alone, for in truth never do you walk alone. Always I walk with you, but sometimes it is a little bit hard to hear my voice, and it is easier to hear a friend's voice. Avail yourself of that which is right here for you, and allow it to be the pathway to the remembrance of the presence of pure love. Pray for one another, support one another. Be as described in the writing of my beloved brother, the one known as James, who said to you in a day and time long ago, and says to you once again, to pray for one another, to confess your faults one to another. By that he did not mean your shortcoming, but to state that which you have not yet seen in holiness. In other words, the problems to confess. I'm having a problem with whatever it is, and to support one another as your Father loves you. Now it is not necessary that the friend be incarnate. You may choose to call upon me or another master, guide, teacher, guardian angel. Pick up the spiritual telephone and know our presence. Always I am with you. So be it. Healing Prayer I am now in the presence of pure love. I acknowledge the presence of masters, teachers, guides, and angels. I acknowledge their love around me and within me. I abide in the dwelling place of the Most High, for I am holy. I invite and accept the support of my loving masters, teachers, guides, and angels in my life and affairs. I invite and accept the support of all loved ones here present or in other dimensions in my life and affairs. I desire to experience and here state what you desire to see healed in your life, realizing that it requires that I must release all old beliefs about this situation. I breathe in the energy of divine consciousness within myself. I breathe out all old beliefs I have held about this situation and condition. I acknowledge the presence of divinity within me, my life and affairs. I acknowledge that all is well. I am at peace. I give thanks that it is so. And so it is.